Welcome everyone to the Neighbor Star League. I am Wolf. With me today is Moonglade. And this is where the Star League really be begins, ladies and gentlemen, because we had Challenger, we found out the top 16 players, and now we're going into our very first group here, where the Star League really begins in the round of 16. Yep, it's it's a very exciting format. It's one we've seen before many times in GSL, but it's uh, it definitely brings out the best players. And, and yeah, as you were saying, Challenger was uh, last week and the week before that, but uh, and it was a fantastic way to start things off with a nice best of five. Yeah. And it really showed... Uh, you know, it, some really great matches, and I mean, the players we have today are very exciting as well with Terminator and uh, Fantasy starting things off, and yeah. Knock and Super, which I think is going to be the main match of tonight. I think so, too. Um, everyone's wondering to see if Fantasy can do it this time because he narrowly failed in Code S to advance, of course, to the round of 16, but, you know, maybe he can get out of his first group here in mm. the SSL, and he looks to be, in my opinion, in top form right now. Uh, some of the best we've seen out of him in his StarCraft II career entirely, mm -hmm. which is interesting because he's now off of SKT. He's starting kind of a, a new fresh start on this foreign team, Dead Pixels. And yeah. uh, he looks to be really solid right now. Well, I mean, I'm looking at three plays in this group, and I can kind of say the same thing with Super, Lenoch, and Fantasy. Like, they're all just playing so well at the moment. They could all definitely get top two in this group. And Terminator, he, he has proven that he can beat pretty damn good players when it comes to it, but yeah. it's usually in qualifiers, not really in the main event. It's usually his kind of curse coming into these tournaments. He just, he like, he makes it here and then he just drops and he just drops the ball kind of badly. Yeah, um, he's always able to advance to that group stage and then usually ends up falling out in third or fourth place. He's just never able to yeah. make it to that, that top eight spot mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes not even the top 16 spot of these Korean tournaments. But obviously a skilled player, someone who's come out a lot for Jin Air in Pro League as well, mm -hmm. sometimes on some snipe maps perhaps. Definitely a good player, someone who's been around for a very, very long time and is still doing consistently well. But sometimes consistency is not enough when you get to the highest level of StarCraft II play. One redeeming factor for him, especially in this tournament, is he did play Tasia in the uh, Challenger and he beat him 3-2. So, you know, that's a, probably like his biggest victory in like a, kind of like a, this kind of setting before. Yeah. Like he made it past the qualifiers and he, he made it past the next stage of that. So, and he's up against the same uh, matchup as well against Fantasy. So... I think it's going to be a very interesting match. Yeah, that's really a good point. Um, somebody could say is super saying he wanted to eliminate a Protoss. Mm. Now he's in uh, a group of Terminators, so we might be able to do just that, depending on how this uh, group ends up working out. Super player's got a long uh, history in StarCraft II as well as Lenox. Mm. Uh, both of these players playing for ESF teams uh, for Epixo in Lenox's case. And for Super, he was playing on MVP back in the day. He used to be known as Vampire. Uh, for those of you guys who don't remember, like, long, long ago. Yeah, so he's been around a while. That was much better name back then as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think most people would agree, Moonglade. Well, take a look at some of the events we've got down here at the arena. Uh, it looks like there's 50 mouse pads. Uh, I don't know what a Sochang Pan is, but there's 10 of those, it looks like. <laughs> I, I believe. And uh, you can get some headsets so you can win some stuff. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. I, I could use a new headset. Uh, collector's edition. For oh World of wow! Collector's edition. I must be for the uh, the newest uh, expansion. Yeah, I believe. And just reading this, looks like uh, you can get a signed mouse pad as well. So let's take a look at this format uh, format for this tournament. So we already had the challenger was decided in best of fives. Then we had our group selection. Now we're going into the dual tournament here in the round of sixteen. Same format as the codes, just a group. And then we go into the round of eight, best of fives again, then the round of four and the finals, both going to be best of sevens. Wow. Round of four, best of sevens. That's pretty cool. That's something we don't normally see. But, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, it really brings out the best in players and always exciting to see a big match like that. Now, money-wise, the champions get to take home about $40,000 and 2,000 WCS points. That's a huge, huge difference between that and taking home just 10,000 and 1,250 WCS points. That's, like, massive, massive. Yeah, that is huge. And, you know, making it past this round is a huge jump up for WCS points as well. So mm -hmm. beating your first round, your your first group, is really, really important if you want to go to BlizzCon this year. Yep, it all starts here. It all started at the end of last year. And, and I mean, with money as well, it's very, very important. You just look at the groups, Group A, B, C, and D, and when they are on, what's your favorite group, Wolf? My favorite group has to be Group D. TY, Rogue, Dream, Amaru, definitely the best. That is pretty hot. Group C is pretty awesome as well. I kind of like Group B just because I want to see life demolished from Protoss. He, he, he's just so sick at this matchup at the moment, and uh, I can't wait to see that uh, 
Well, that's scary because he only has to practice for one matchup. It, it makes things so much easier when you only have to focus on one matchup. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. Well, here are our matchups for today. We're starting things off with Terminator versus Fancy in that PBT. And as you're mentioning, Lenok will face off against Super. And perhaps the highlight match of the night. Mm. Definitely the better one, I think, out of these uh, two sets of matches. Yeah, definitely. And these will crazy. These will all be best of threes. So just as you're familiar with in the GSL, it's going to be a double elimination system here. Winner's match, loser's match, and then the final match will decide the second player to advance and the second player to drop out. And uh, that's how our Star League works here. When you're out, you're out. You know, you got to requalify next season. Start over again. We have three seasons of Star League this year. That's right. And we have a new sponsor, by the way, in Neighbor. For those of you guys who don't know what Neighbor is, it's basically like the Google of Korea. You use it to search websites, search indexes of blogs as well. It tries to bring you, you know, relevant content based on what you search for, uh, usually in the form of blogs. And, uh, you know, just gives you a good idea of what to expect if you're searching for a certain topic. Yeah, I mean, it's so much money in Naver, and for them to look at StarCraft and put their name on it, it's it's a huge step forward. And uh, I believe it's just for this season for now, but it could be for the future as well. Yeah, hoping for bigger and better things. Very exciting times. Now, Terminator here, you can look at his record versus Terran. He's 5-5, five and five, but that's only 10 games we're looking at in his recent 10 matches. So, pretty, pretty good record. Not horrible. Uh, he did beat, as we can see now. Yeah. He was the highlight of the round of 32. Yeah, he beat Teja here. Oh, excuse me. He beat him 3-2. Uh, and uh, it was a pretty uh, back and forth kind of best of uh, best of five. Teja taking the first two and then Terminator coming back, gaining momentum each game and uh, closing it out. Uh, Terminator definitely showed a lot of variance in his style as well. He, uh, he really tried to mix it up a lot. A lot of tech switches, a lot of interesting mind games. So uh, it was a lot of fun to see, and I'm very excited to see what he has to sh uh, has planned today. Hopefully yep. something different, because I feel like he did expose kind of like his one star, which is uh, Phoenix Colossi, just a little too much. And I'm, sh I'm sure uh, Fantasy would be looking at that and being pretty prepared for that kind of style. You know, uh, he, he beat Teja in a huge upset. I feel like most people were expecting Teja to advance there, and Teja did take that 2-0 lead. Yeah. And he's able to get the reverse, uh, you know, three in a row victory in order to advance. And you just don't see that happen hardly ever in a best of five. Uh, I don't think it's ever happened in the best of seven before. I mean, obviously oh, it has, but... Um, <laughs> oh, let's but think about just, innovation for a second and it just, it just rarely ever happens, you know? So, it, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, we could even talk about fantasy when we come to this because we saw how a player kind of gets... Uh, kind of gets um, very tilted. Right. Marine King played against fantasy in the Challenger League. He, he went 0-3, and you saw each game how much more tilted Marine King became to the point where... By game three, he was ready to just leave at the start. He was so upset. And this can happen. I mean, it can happen to uh, players that have different mentalities. And Teja kind of just he just got the, uh, on the backhand. And from there, Terminator took advantage. I mean, just, you know, taking a look at these highlights here. I feel like, you know, for, for both of these players, um, it's so important to, you know, to, to note that they're both good at fighting from behind. And in a group situation like this, if you end up going that loser's match, that can really hurt your mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, but for these two players, clearly they've been there before. They know what that's like, and they know how to recover. Yep. Fantasy has been in so many tournaments in StarCraft 1. He's, he's been through a lot. He has so much experience on the main stage. So to fall down to the loser's match, I don't think it's going to be a, a terrible situation for him, should that even happen. No. But as I was saying before, I feel like this guy is in his best shape. We have seen him since he switched over to StarCraft 2 right now. I mean, he has never looked stronger. He didn't advance from Kodas, but he looked really, really, really good. He did look good. Here are the maps today. It's going to be King Sejong, Deadwing, and Merry-Go-Round. Yep. Standing at Nimbus and Overgrowth. Fair enough. Not too much of a surprise there. Yeah, I mean, no Protoss wants to play against Terran on Nimbus. And I'm glad that we're going to see that map get retired very, very soon from all map pools. Yeah, well, uh, we're definitely not using the new ladder maps just yet. Uh, they only came into play very, very recently. Yeah. So people still getting used to them, people still complaining about them, for now. Yeah, but as uh, you know, these maps get retired out, you're going to see them, I think, banned even more from these players because they're not practicing on Nimbus on the ladder anymore. That is very fair. And yeah, that is a good point. You know, no pro else wanted to play on Nimbus before, but if you're not even practicing it, you really don't want to play on that map anymore. Yeah, definitely not. So, reasonable bans here for these two players. Map one, as mentioned, is going to be King Sejong Station. A great map to start the Star League off on. Two-player map. Very, very balanced, very fair map to start this one off on. 
It's the classic PVT map. It's the, it's the map we've seen PVT on so many times before. You can, you can kind of like guess what's going to happen for the first 10 minutes. We're going to see Terminator go Blink Stalkers. Fantasy is going to go for a Mind Drop. We'll see what happens from there. Exactly. Unless they decide to mix things up. All right, Moonblade, it's time for game number one of the Neighbor SSL. Let's jump into it. The top left in red. Virginia Green Wings, it's Terminator. There he is. Very, very dangerous. Dangerous player. Dangerous man. To the bottom right, perhaps more dangerous, is the terrorist Terran. It's fantasy. Now, to give you guys a little bit of background in the group selection, you guys didn't catch that. Uh, Sojung was with me, and we gave you guys some English coverage of that. Terminator was originally in that group of death in Group D, but it requested to be switched out. Dark and Lenok had the golden balls, which meant that they could actually you know, move players around. And it was actually Lenok, not Dark. Dark decided to move Hero instead. Lenok decided to move Terminator into his group. Mm. And so Lenok brought him in here. And we'll see how he does. I mean, he was really, really hoping to get out of that, that group of death. Now he's here. Now he's up against Fantasy. Yeah, and I mean, uh, have you seen Lenok's ZVP as of late? I, yeah. I kind of feel like Lenok was kind of just playing for... Uh, he's doing it for himself. <laughs> completely for himself. He's like, well, I can get an easy win off this. And we're seeing a very early SCV go out in the map from Fantasy. Yeah. Just checking around. You can see his GSL results down there, by the way. Yeah, going to be the CC first. Just going for a scout for any sort of proxy. And come back for that CC. Yeah, just One thing play to, uh, carefully. A bit of interesting statistics as of recent times. We, as you said before, MC did knock out Fantasy in the uh, GSL Codes round of 32. As well as uh, he lost to uh, Trap in the IEM Taipei qualifiers. Online, granted, but still an interesting statistic to note. He has, hasn't been winning his uh, TDPs as of late. Yeah, and that's that's scary because, you know, there are two processes in this group. And not only does he have to, you know, be concerned about Terminator style, but also Super. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind for later. Yep. So like you said, a very safe scout into the CC. Not going to CC first, you know, into, you know, that sort of blind opening against somebody like Terminator. Does drop the double barracks down afterwards. And on the other side of things here, Terminator just going to check here. Cancel that Zealot, see if there's no eBay block, mm -hmm. and make a Nexus. So very, very standard opening from Terminator. But Fancy gets a little bit ahead with his Greed. Yep, we'll have to see what he does with it. And we'll have to wait and see if Terminator is going to go for the same style we saw him use against Tejo, which was that Blink Stalker opening. Very, very common on this map because of that back entrance, that uh, the little lip you can jump up, so to speak. Well, you can pretty much jump up anywhere. There's a lot of kind of uh, areas for Blink Stalkers to do work in. And it's not usually a hardcore commitment. It's more of a uh, kind of like a pressure, a uh, great way to scout, apply pressure while you transition, while you go for that third base, go into Colossi, go into upgrades. And usually with Terran, you will see them go for a more of a drop sort of oriented style because of the way the, uh, the natural is exposed in the middle of the map. Yeah, that was a very good scout by Terminator. Uh, by good, I don't mean he did anything really special about it, but it, it ended up seeing things. That's what really makes it good. <laughs> really had to see. Yeah. yeah. Twilight Council. This is the normal way of things. Like you said, you know, a standard macro oriented opening from the Terran, usually with Reaper, but in this case, CC first. And then the Protoss is going to love Blink on this map. There's so many different ways to abuse Blink. Mm -hmm. There's two entrances to the natural. There's two entrances to Blink into the main base. You know, there's just so much flexibility. You can Blink in one side, and if you're doing well, you can even Blink out the other, depending on how much damage you're able to get done. There's so much maneuverability. Four Stalkers on this map. Now, we saw this build from the Terran specifically uh, go for this early three racks. And I'm trying to remember, I think it was on Dead, Dead Wing. Wing. Yeah. And we saw a Protoss go for a blink all in. It was San. It was San, that's right. And it completely failed. Let's hope uh, we don't see the same thing from Terminator because it would just be a horrible build order loss. Yeah, I, uh, the player that San's playing against escapes me right now, but, you know. Cure? Was it? I think you might be right. Maybe. Sounds right. So, you know, this, uh, let's see if this is a commitment. He does get a robo. He's still making probes for now. Okay. So, so it's probably just going to be a blink feign into a third base, but yeah, it's 
it's scary. It's pressure. You have to be careful. You have to be, you know, on the defensive as a Terran against this. This is why this build is so strong, because if the Terran gets greedy and thinks, oh, you're just going to pressure me a little bit, I'm going to skip bunkers, then a second round of uh, Warpins comes in, and then he can do some serious damage. Or if he's doing an all-in, he can kill you. Yeah, he can. But uh, as you see, two tech labs already, two more orders already in making. So, I mean, this is going to be completely immune to any sort of stalker aggression, really. It's going to be up to... Uh, it's going to really be up to fantasy to avoid any sort of SCV damage. So long as the bio is in the right place at the right time, nothing should come of it. And I'm sure Terminator is going to realize this pretty quickly, especially when he has observers on the map. Yep, that scan at the natural doesn't reveal a whole lot. I mean, he knows the Nexus is there. He knows it's four gases. But uh, there was no tech there. Double Forge going up in the main base now, as well as that bay. Oh, unbeknownst. Two fantasy right now. And two, yeah, two forges from Terminator. So he's really going to go onto the greed after this. Very greedy. Yeah. Not a bad choice, I think. Oh, I think it's a great choice, especially for this map. Mm, there will be kind of a scary window for Fantasy to come in with uh, with a lot of bio and stim. And I'm sure Terminator will not have enough to really deal with it on the map. He will have to be very defensive. He's going to have to rely on his Mothership core and any sentries that he have uh, has, which right now he only has one. Mm. does build up a lot of energy. I think it's got enough for quite a few force seals right now, but still, there's something to keep in mind. And he doesn't actually have any detection or high ground vision. Uh, to use these Stalkers to pressure right now. And if Fancy sees such a small amount of Stalkers, and he's already checked for pylons on the right side of the map, he's going to feel like, okay, I don't really have to worry about Blink too much right now. Only sees three Stalkers right now. Only these? Yeah. So far, so good. And Ooh. look at that, a scan on the Observer Fantastic. as well. Fantastic. But I think the Observer kind of saw everything. Saw the Starport, moving to the Reactor. He knows there's going to be a lot of Bio, plus two Medivacs on the way very shortly. Stim is almost finished as well. This timing kind of, it all adds up really nicely. These two medivacs will come out just after Stim is finished, so Bio can move across the map. And look how much Bio that is. Yeah, look at the army supply. 37 to 26 with good upgrades. Stim is done. Comet Shield's not far away. Concussive Shells takes almost no time to research. So this is going to be a very solid push coming across the map here. He's making a sentry right now. The Chrono Boost, that 1-1, one, one, it's Chrono Boost he's not using on getting his Colossi out to hold. So mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that one's going to be done in time. It's going to be very close. I think he should have it in time, especially if Fantasy's going to be waiting for these medivacs. It's just really about keeping this Colossi alive and placing some decent force fields. Kind of just to zone him out, let them get the uh, Photon Overcharge, do its work. And so we got a little bit, uh, maybe one or two more Colossi. And can safely kind of move out and take that third. Now, the drops are everything here. There's no way he's going to be able to attack directly at the front. And this is a great observer here by Terminator. He sees the drops coming. Now he's going to have to react because he can't pull too many units in the main base. He's kind of moving everything right now. Yeah, this could be bad. Okay, drops see this. Oh, one gets picked off, but he sees there's an opening. He's just a bit too slow to react to it, though. Might be able to get in the simulator. That'd be one small victory here. Oh, not even oh, that. Oh. oh, he gets it, but at the cost of a couple more units. A lot of units go down there, and Blink is still on the map. Yeah. So he could actually Blink forward and kill a Marauder here. He can. He's going to be careful. Doesn't want to commit too much in case they stim and turn around, but it's like he's going to stim and run away. Yeah, there's too many There's too many Colossi here, so if he, tur if he turns around, he's going to eat too much fire. And Fancy in a very uncomfortable place, and a Zealot kills oh. the SCV building the CC. <laughs> oh, no. He might be able to defend that for now, but if this Cross Army keeps pressuring, you know, there's even a, a pylon nearby. Things could get really bad here. And Terminator now has 1-1 upgrades. He still has the double forge infrastructure to continue. Double upgrades, which he's doing right now. He's getting the plus 2, plus 2. He's going to be way ahead in upgrades. And because there's no Vikings on the map, and he knows that, you know, he's in a great spot with his Colossi. He's going to be able to defend his third base so easily. Even picks up another drop. Ooh. Almost. Pretty much gets rid of it. I mean, what are you going to do with one Marauder, one Marine? Not much at this point. So really nicely done. Terminator in complete control of this game. He's like, pull the boys, I dare you. <laughs> oh, God. Now that would be horrible. That would be horrible right now. Horrible, Wolf. Horrible, terrible. Absolutely horrible, man. That would be the end of the game. And we'd have to go into the next one. Bunch of gates coming up now because he can afford them. Three Colossi, more than enough to deal with this buyer. Versus the first two Vikings right now. Nexus cannon goes down, there's oh. even a cannon here. There are a few Widow Mines, but good probe pull. Same time, we do see Bio going around to the third. If he decides to stim in now, he can cancel it. Yeah, this would be a great moment. He has to do this right now. This Nexus is nearly complete, by the way. About 1,800 hit points in total. Oh, wow, this is definitely going to bring him back. He's going to kill it for sure. He cancels it. 
At least saves the minerals, but still a huge blow. Putting Fantasy up a base for an incredible amount of time. Yeah, that's that's huge. That base was almost done. Yeah, it was practically done. It was warping in like yeah. you could see it. And how do you let that finish? That would have been, of course, a mistake. But it's just that that moment, you know, where it's it's like if he holds this, he's got a third base and he has all the upgrades. But this is Fantasy's way back into the game. Now Terminator is going to harass this third base a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's no units nearby, no bunker, and a bit of a late reaction here. So he kills, you know, three, three SCBs, pulls them off the line. You do that periodically, and you you know, you're causing a lot of economic damage just simply pulling them off the line like that. And look how close that pylon is. It's such a convenient place to be warping in. Yep. Fantasy would really ha should be really going to uh, look around for any sort of pylons. You see another scan in the middle to get rid of another observer as well. Fancy's got like night owl goggles, man. He doesn't miss a single observer on the map. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, there's a bit of a drop coming towards the main base. It is spotted by a yet another observer. So he's positioning his units well. He's even pick off a marauder here. Mm -hmm. Very nice. A lot of units lost, as you guys could see on this tab here. Or fantasy, but you know this is how Terran works in the matchup. You constantly have to be harassing, and that's going to come at a cost. It's going to come at a price. Yeah. I mean, he, he is ahead in supply by 22 supply at the moment. So all his losses have not been in vain. He's done a lot of economic damage, especially canceling that third base. Now, now I mean, the army supply that you see here at the top right does not take into account the fact that we have charge. We have three through upgrades now on the way. He's ahead in upgrades for just a few more seconds until 2-2 finishes for Fantasy. So any engagement that happens before that's done, he's going to be fighting at a deficit. Viking count right now is pretty healthy. You know, with uh, good control, using the map, using the terrain against the Colossi, we absolutely can take a fight with this. Mm. But the transition to Storm is probably going to happen pretty soon. Yeah, it will happen very, very shortly. And I mean, he already has Ghost, so he is okay. He is completely fine for that. Maybe like a few more Vikings would probably be good against five Colossi. Yeah, and you know his uh, Marauder count right now is not the best compared to his Marines. This is a mostly Marine army here, and Ghost actually cut back on his Marauder time because he needs to use those tech labs to make those. Mm. There's something to consider here. We'll have to yeah. scan twice. It's a pretty decent number. I mean, you're gonna need Ghost. You wanna need a uh, pretty healthy Marine count to deal with uh, a lot of Zealots as well. So it's, it's not horrible. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, pretty decent mix for any sort of fight coming up now. And it would be a great time if he came in before any go uh, any Templar came out in the map. Yeah, there's not a single, uh, you know, Templar. There's no Templar archives even. He's going to the Dark Shrine yeah. to do some DT drops. I think he thinks he can keep Fancy back on the defensive, but Fancy is not going to wait. He's no. almost, you know, knocking on the door of this base. He's definitely going to stop this fourth from even starting. And 3-3 is not ready yet. This is a great opportunity for Fancy to do a lot of damage. This is going to be all about the control here. And it starts already. Forcing a stim here. Moving those Vikings back. He's going to get a good time warp. Up 20 supply. And yeah, it's going to be completely bad positioning at this point. Got to be very careful with the Stalkers. He has used his Blink, so the uh, Vikings can poke just a little bit more for now. Yep. Just and he's going to do so. Here we go. This could be it. Now starting to engage. The Stalkers Blink forward. The Zealots want to use that charge. Very careful control here, actually, by Terminator. Doesn't oh. allow the Zealots to charge until the opportune moment. And even some DTs at the front. Yeah, I like that. Really nice time warp as well. Completely forcing the army back even further. He stopped the Zealots from charging. That was really cool. He's only going to charge when he wants to. Ooh, that might have been a bit of a mistake of a blink. We do see a couple of Colossi getting focused down. Yeah, and they're actually bumping into each other a little bit here, not doing their full damage. Not the best Colossus control ever. But there's no Vikings left anymore to speak of, and this will push him back. DT harass over here. Not a ton of damage. Did keep some reinforcements back, but now... Fancy has a fourth base. He's going to make this into the planetary. He's got the high ground. This is a great defensive location on this map, really in any matchup. Yeah, it really opens the map for the Terran. It gives him a great staging point to retreat to at any time. Great defensive positioning. And already we're seeing Terminator try different avenues, going for that back debris. He needs to be careful, though, because it's a great opportunity for Vikings to get damaged on these scans. Very careful here. Very careful. And I think we're going to have to see a Templar transition pretty soon. I don't know how much more he can stay on just Colossi and Charge Lots. Well, that's one of the strengths of late game pros is always switching between the two. Exactly. It's kind of both. Manipulating the, the quantity of the Terrans kind of counter that. If, does he have enough Ghosts? Does he have enough Vikings? If you remove one, you can make more of the other. Exactly. It's that ratio that's so important and so difficult to maintain. So much damage going into the natural, though. Really forcing the army back in very awkward position at the same time. Is Terminator going to go for that fourth base? It's going to be so difficult to break, but I, I guess if he pulled enough games in the main, he might be able to go for it. I think he's kind of posturing for it. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of burst damage in this army. 19 Stalkers. 
That's a lot of burst damage, and he's just going to go for that center tower. Gets EMP'd. And you know what? Pick off a Viking and just walk back. Get your shields back. Mm. I think that's I think that's the play here. Yeah, he spent a lot of uh, Zealots and DTs trying to create a diversion in that natural and main. Not the best of moves, but still, now Terminator ahead in supply. And ahead a whole set of upgrades for just one second more, but now closing that gap is fantasy. Well, I have to wonder, you know, is this lack of a Templar transition going to come back to bite him? He still hasn't added it. He's getting the upgrades for shields even, which will be great for Archons, but he just doesn't even have any Archons in his army. Yeah, I didn't oh, know Oh, this is, is not a place to fight. He needs oh, to pull back. Very awkward positioning. Oh, he's eating a lot of Colossus damage here. Going to lose one as well. I don't know what made him thought he, uh, the army was out of position. He must have saw something on the map that really kind of made him think that he could just move up the ramp like that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, three Zealots will join a DT to harass this third base a little bit further. I think there's still a turret and a few Marines, but that's not enough. And we'll I mean, be able to get some damage done here. I can kind of appreciate why we see Terminator still uh, not really committing to any Templar. Look at his fifth and sixth gas. There isn't any. He's completely stayed on four gas this whole time. So he's like, he's on five bases and only making minerals. He wants to kill. He's trying to kill. But Fantasy has held on for so long. Well, look at this. Vikings again getting some great volleys off on those Colossi and a huge EMP on all those Stalkers. Will make those shields and a great one on the Zealots as well. Oh, wow. This is not looking good for Terminator, but he is pushing this bio back for now. For now, but I mean, those Colossi are very weak. He can stim forward and kill them. Yeah, once they're gone, he could actually continue to fight with a huge wave of Zealots. They're going to get some good shots off here as well. Ends up being a mostly even fight here. Can he get that expensive Colossus? No! Oh, he didn't right-click it. Oh, wow. That was a... Mm. a that's something that went wrong here. And also over here, he's lost uh, 15 SCVs to that small amount of Zealot oh, DT wow. harass. And now he's down 16 workers. <laughs> oh, and oh, no! The <laughs> Medivax! The Medivax. Get him out of here! It's not where they want to go. I mean, we could say like that was a pretty good fight for Terminator. But at the same time, man, he's still on four gases. He's not. He, he's going to have a hard time really making anything but Colossi and maybe a few more Stalkers with all his Zealots. And it's just really up to, uh, it's really up to Fantasy to hold on and take advantage of the fact that he reset the Colossi count. Yeah, and when you're at this worker count at 47, when you have triple mules to drop down, you're still at a pretty, pretty healthy economy. Um, you know, he's got the gas bank to make four medevacs at a time, for example, which he is doing now because he knows he has a healthy enough Viking count to where he doesn't need to make Vikings anymore. He can just make some more medevacs. He's going to lose a gas. Not the end of the world. We're killing a DT. In fact, he might even save it. If he wanted to. He wasn't using it. I mean, look how much gas he has. He yeah. doesn't even need it. He doesn't. All he you know, needs is this, Vikings, man. This style that we're seeing at a Terminator really reminds me uh, of the style we used to see from I Am Youngwa back in the day. Just never going to switch to Templar. Never going to do it. Sometimes adds Archons in, but doesn't get Storm. Yeah, I mean, we used to see Hero do this last year. Like, he, especially on this map, he'd go into, like, heavy upgrade, Zealot, Colossi. But the game would usually end a lot earlier than this. This yeah. is going really late game, and we still see Terminator on the same composition. Not deciding to transition, making it easier on himself if he had those Storms. Yeah, if he had Storm, you know, it would make it so much easier. It would force so much more, you know... Careful micro out of fantasy. Good stop position on these SCVs to protect his bio, by the way. That's something you can do in just one second to help turn a fight into your favor uh, at, a, at a base like this, at a harassment situation. Now, I fantasy, don't, got to be a little careful here. Yeah, I don't think he wants to come up that ramp. There's too many stalkers <laughs> at the top. There's, there's simply too much, uh, too many gateway units just now, but it looks like we are going to see Terminator make his move. He's got a huge army here, and this could be his moment to actually just totally annihilate and remove Fantasy's army from the map. Great time warp there to help out the last part of his Zealots and that DT there. And even though the Colossi fall, the Gateway Army on the ground may be strong enough to push this back, even an Immortal in the fray. And he doesn't even kill that DT, has to scan again. And he doesn't get it, it's still alive. <laughs> he yeah. still doesn't get it, it's actually still alive and fighting. Such an awful position, but now more goes into the fray. He can deal with everything with those EMPs. Kind of becomes a one-sided affair when everything of the Protoss becomes half health from those EMPs, and there's nothing to really equalize it from the uh, Protoss. No Templar, no Psionic Storm. Right, there's a reason why Protosses don't use Gateway comms versus Bio in mid to late game in this matchup, is because they can't win. You cannot win with just a pure Gateway comp. You can win against a small army like we saw there, but once the rest of the reinforcers come, once the medevacs come and a few more EMPs go down, you need that AoE. And if you've got two forms of AoE, sometimes that makes it Basically, uh, as, as a Terran player, it feels like an unminable situation against that army. You have to perfectly EMP, you have to have your Vikings in the right spot, but you just stick them with only Colossi. 
He's making double Robo Colossi even yeah. at this point. He feels like he's killed a ton of the Vikings and just wants to keep making Colossi. Yeah, and he's essentially out of gas at this point. Very low on minerals as well, despite having five bases, just trying his best to remax in time. And he is up 40 supply currently, now 30 supply. Like, he is kind of maintaining a lead, and I think it's, it's up to Fantasy to kind of avoid trying to take these fights in the middle of the map that he does not have to take because he's constantly got the... Uh, He's got the composition advantage constantly. Right. It's just about him waiting to take the perfect fight. He's going to pick up a few stalkers here. A scan goes down. He's going to get that DT this time, but he loses a few Vikings. And you know, third Colossus in the army now. Look at this. He's got to actually fight this. He That's three Colossi. Yeah, Fancy needs to get out of here. That's too many Marines in this army, too. It's almost a pure Marine army. There's very few Marauders in the back. I think he's just going to die here. I think he is. That's going to be it. EMPs wow. again and hits the Observer even. But now he just doesn't have anything. He's not going to be able to hold this CC, that's for sure. And one thing Moonglad I would have loved to see from Fantasy, I feel like would have really helped his economy, is just a bunker at the third base. He always had units there, mm. but never enough. A bunker there, I think, could have done wonders for him. Bunker, you normally do see bunkers at these third bases, simply because of the fact that constant zealot harassment is going to happen. I mean, even a bunker, maybe some turrets, at like that new fifth base that he was so worried about not taking, like, he, that's why he was on the map constantly, is because... He was like, he thought he was so far behind or something. He's like, well, I got to go out in the map. I got to make him make something happen. But no, man, like he's on four gases going Colossi Zella. Just wait a second. Yeah. Max out and, and take this perfect sort of uh, engagement that's going to kill everything. It's almost like you can never really identify that there were just never going to be Templar, you yeah. know? It's, it's almost like you always feel like, okay, the Templar are going to come in now, right? Like, yeah. And he's going to barely have any units because he has no gas. But the Templar obviously just never came because he didn't have those gases. That yeah. wasn't his plan. He must have thought he was on a timer or something. He's like, well, i got to make something happen now or I just have to leave the game. Like, often in TVP, that is the case. But if there's no storm, you can keep just taking cost-efficient engagements in the right position, the right fights with your Vikings. Mm -hmm. And he had a great Viking count. He did take some really awesome engagements. He did. He really did, but he just never really made them again. And, and the harassment at his third base wore him down. He lost too many SCVs. Yeah. Very, very constant. He, and when, right you, there. when you start losing that many SCBs and you don't have a mineral bank anymore, then you start making Marines instead of Marauders. And we start making too many Marines.